Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All the time. Praise the Lord. God is good. Uh, he's amazing. This is an amazing day today. A special, <laughs> a special day. A very special day. God is so good. He's just working miracles. He's, um, he's doing some things that I don't know why we get surprised. I really don't understand why we get surprised. Because he's far above anything that we can think or imagine. Um, I've had a little bit of uh, difficulty trying to pull this together. I knew God had this piece and this piece. And I was trying to figure out how he wanted this piece and this piece. Then you folks that teach know what I'm talking about. Amen. And we want to hear from God and we want to do it his way always. Amen. Don't stand up yet. I'm going to have you stand up in just a moment. Um, you guys know that there's times the Lord gives me um, something to write. And I have this little book that I write in. <clears throat> It takes about two minutes every time he gives it to me because he's writing and I'm not. And I praise God for that. That's a blessing. And I haven't done it in a while, but when he tugs at my heart and I sit still long enough, um, I write down. Right, Judy? Uh, this one is very sad. So I very much debated on reading it. But I really feel like it gets better, okay? So just bear with me. I want you to listen to this. And Stan, you can play while I'm, I'm reading this, okay? If you will. Wrote this in April of 2000, beginning of the millennium. And as I look back on this past 16 years, the 16 years this month that I wrote it, God wrote it. Excuse me. And as I look back on it, I realize what he was really saying. Will there be tears? Will there be tears in his eyes as he stands? Will there be tears in his voice? Depart from me. Chances and opportunities given, none taken. The word in abundance, but no repentance. Will there be tears in his eyes as he stands? Will there be tears in his voice? Depart from me. No veil upon the heart. No secrets hidden. Choices are made. Memories that fade. Will there be tears in his eyes as he stands? Will there be tears in his voice depart from me? Will there be tears? That's how serious this is. And what I'm going to share with you in just a moment is an important part of why we're even here. Why you even go to church. Why you're sitting there this morning. Let's all stand for the reading of the word. This is a little different this morning. It gets better. Sometimes we just need to take a serious thought. Amen. And you know, folks, we're here. But they aren't. They're out there. Some of these words, will there be tears in his eyes, will be spoken to those that haven't heard. For those that we miss, for those that we don't tell about Jesus. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah, the first chapter. When you get there, say amen. Then say, I love, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Okay. I love Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I want the youth to realize something. Isaiah was 15 years old when he started preaching. Did you know that? 
15 years old when he started preaching and he only lived to the age of 85 which is not a very long time for way back then right they lived a whole lot longer Lord just wanted him to come on and be with him amen he wrote Isaiah wrote this book 800 years before Christ 800 years before Christ ever was here he's called the millennial prophet because he prophesied about the millennium the thousand year reign of Christ after all this is over this age is over he wrote more about it than any other prophet these are real people folks these are real prophets of God when these prophets of God came into town the people ran they didn't run to them to get a word because they didn't know what that word was going to be so they ran from them because they might not have been doing all they need to be doing or vice versa amen let's read Isaiah let me say this Isaiah first chapter in the 18th verse is something I've heard all my life I would say that any folks that have been in church for any amount of time, especially in the little Baptist church I went to, I've heard this scripture so many times, but two weeks ago I read this scripture. I started reading the book of Isaiah, and I read this scripture, and it had a whole new, I mean, what I tell my grandchildren, bada boom is what it did. I mean, it was a bada boom moment, bada boom. It was a bada boom moment, moment in my life. And I want to, God to use me this morning to help you to get that bada boom moment. Hallelujah. Anybody want a bada boom moment? Anybody in this place want a bada boom moment? What do you need this Amen. morning? What do you need this morning? Gosh, oh, look at this. Oh my gosh. You just don't know. You just don't know what God's been doing, praise the Lord. But you will know. You know a lot, but you're going to know some of the mode this morning. We know what some of the mo is, don't we? Praise the Lord. Verse 18, come now. Everybody say, come now. Come now. Let us reason together, Let saith us the reason Lord. Together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet. Yeah, though your sins be as scarlet. They shall be white as snow. Yes. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Glory to God. Come now. Now when Isaiah wrote this. Judah was in some trouble. Judah was doing all the rituals. Judah was doing all the ceremonies. But Judah wasn't looking at him. They were looking at the ceremonies. Their heart was far from God at that moment. It's far. Isaiah is trying to say, look, folks, this is what God said. Not what Isaiah said. This is what God said. Come now. Come now. Come now and let us reason together. Oh my goodness. The God of creation, the God who made you, the God of everything is saying to us, come now. Not tomorrow, not yesterday. Come now and let us reason. God wants to reason with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to be with you. He wants to be all that you need. Amen. Amen. I wrote down some things that the Lord says, come now. Let me read them to you. <clears throat> come now, eat from my table. Those who are hungry and thirsty. This wasn't planned. I promise this wasn't planned. You know, Donnie and I don't talk a whole lot about what's going to happen on Sunday morning because we want God to be in control. Amen. Come now, hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. And when you hear that other one, close your ears, folks. Cast it down. In Jesus' name. Come now, receive my love. Oh my goodness, God is love. Come now, I will comfort you. I will comfort you, won't he, Earl? 
He will, praise God. Come, now, I will never, oh my gosh, this is one of my favorites. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Folks will leave you and forsake you. Brothers, sisters, I mean, mothers, fathers, spouses, because what? We're human beings. But God says he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. Come now, I will meet every need. Come now, I long to be with you. Come now, give me your heart. Now folks, a lot of us are guilty of halfway. Okay, God, I'll come on Sunday morning. I'm not, I don't have time on Wednesday night. I just, I, I, I just, I just can't make it on Wednesday night. Oh, well, God, I can't, I can't come that night. I can't help that day. I don't have time to pray right now. Everybody's guilty. Every person's guilty. That's not what it's about this morning. Amen. Praise God. Come now, touch me. God says you can touch him. Did you know you can touch him? Did you know you can touch God? How big is your God? Huh? Oh my goodness. All of us can touch him. Come now, I will wipe away all tears. Not a few, not some, but all tears. Come now, be all I have called you to be. Come now, I give eternal life with me. That's it, folks. Where are we going? You know, uh, a while back I read this little thing, and I think I've shared this before. We're here about five minutes. A thousand years is a day unto God, right? You remember that in the Word? A thousand years is a day. So when you break it down, five minutes. Everybody say five minutes. Five minutes. Not five dollar, but five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. What do you do in five minutes? Well, I ran from this room to that room a few minutes ago to go to the bathroom. Five minutes. Takes you longer than that to drink a cup of coffee. Right? Right? When we realize how short a time we are here, and how important those folks out there are to God. He has no favors. No, not one should perish. No, not one. That's what his word says. No, not one should perish. No, not one. What you doing outside these walls? Huh? Wait, what we doing? What we doing? We're blessed this morning. We are very blessed this morning. Not only the word of God. But physically, physically, Phys yeah, that's it. <laughs> physically, you know, right about like that. <laughs> we are blessed, amen. God is so good. Good time. He says, "Learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, and plead for the widow." God's heart is the poor. Amen? We know that. Pure and undefiled religion is taking care of the widows and the orphans. That's the poor. Revelation 21.4 says, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For that the former things have passed away. No more tears. And let's do all that we can do within ourselves for the Lord out there. Out there. Okay? Let's remember that this week. When you leave this place today, you'll remember the blessings. Let's remember what the Word says. Let's remember that God says, come now. Come now and let us reason together. That's what He says, come now. So that's for them out there too, right? come now. How do they come now? It's for us to go out, to go there. Amen? Let's talk to our Father this morning.
Let's talk to the one that's above all. The one who loved us so much that he gave his son to die on that cross. His son to cover us with his blood. That we're able to go into the throne room of God boldly covered by the blood of Jesus. That we are privileged to be able to talk to him. He calls to us this morning. Come now. Come now. Come now. Father, we love you so much and we thank you for today. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your love. We thank you that your word does say that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. The God who made heaven and earth our Father. You are our Father. And your Son sits at your right hand, ever interceding for us. We thank you for this, Lord. You've made a way. You've made a way for us. And we praise you for this. Lord, we lift up your manservant this morning. Anoint him, Father. Anoint us. Fresh manna this morning, Father. Help us, God, to receive your word in our heart. Not just in our minds, but in our heart. Father, we lift up Stan to you this morning as he leads us into praise and worship. Father, help him to hear your voice and to be obedient. We lift up Annette and we lift up Earl this morning. Minister to them and through them, Father. We lift up Paul this morning. We ask you to touch him. Father, we lift up every person in this place, every family that's represented, God. You know every need. You know every issue. You know everything that we're all going through. <clears throat> we understand one thing this morning. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Your joy is our strength. And we can't make it without you, God. We can't make it without you. And Father, we thank you for what you're going to do this morning. We thank you for the blessings. And Father, I ask you to bless every person in here. I ask you to bless them in Jesus' precious name. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Help them to open up their hearts to receive you in a different, mighty way this morning that they've never experienced before. We all need to take new steps in you, God. Draw us by your Holy Spirit as only you can. We love you so much and we give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, and all God's children said, Amen. Come on, church, let's give God some praise up in here. Come on, let's give God some praise in the house. Give him praise. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, come on, church, let's give him a big old clap of praise. He's worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lord God Almighty. He's the great I am. He's the Lord God Almighty. He's the Lamb of God. We've come to praise him, to worship him, to glorify him in spirit and in truth. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. Have your way. Glory be to God. God, thank you, Jesus. Oh, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord, church? Isn't it good to come together in oneness, lifting up Jesus, lifting nobody up but Jesus, church? It's all about Him. Oh, it's so good. Boy, it's so good to look at somebody and smile at them real big. I want to smile at somebody you ain't smiled at lately. Come on. Can I get amen up in here? Vince, come on up here, brother. Vince got a, 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 something he wants to give us right fast. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, and we're going to get ready to take up that offer. We got some special things going on today, y'all. In fact, I'm already blown away what God's already done. My Lord, I can't wait to share some of this with you. Okay, I want to say this is a set time. <clears throat> this is a set time in Zion. And I was going through the word, and the Lord says, this is the beginning of the blessing. The very, very, if you'll receive it by faith. Yes, Lord. In Deuteronomy 28, and it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, and thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord God. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed. 
thou shalt be in the field. Blessed shalt thou be in the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of thy <laughs> cattle, the increase of thine kin, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall that be thy basket and store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest. The Lord shall <laughs> cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. And thou shalt come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven times. And the Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouse, and all that thou hast thy hand unto thee. He shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee in a holy people unto himself, and as hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways, and all the people on the, of the earth shall see, and thou shalt be called by the name of the Lord, and thou shalt be afraid of thee and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in good and fruit of the body and the fruit of the cattle and the fruit of the of thy ground and the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers the Lord shall open up unto thee his good treasure the heaven to give the rain who that latter rain I'm telling you oh it's coming the rain unto thy treasure the land in a season and to bless all the work of thy hand and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow and the Lord shall make <laughs> yes and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail and thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God shall I command thee this day to others God's to serve them that's for us as a body because it was like a, a, a Elijah, he kept telling Ahab, go, go, it's going to rain. No, 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 I don't see anything. He sent him back seven times. We're heading into the seventh time he looked, and guess what? There was an abundance of rain. And it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Come on, church, we ought to give God some praise up here. It is coming. In fact, it's trickling now, praise the Lord. Give me, I want you to get this in your spirit. Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth his fruit yeah. in his season, yes. and his leaf also shall not wither. Praise the Lord. And whatsoever he does, whatsoever he does shall prosper. I don't know about your hands, but these hands are prosperous. I was praying one day, I was praying not too long ago, and it's like the Lord said, Son, I've touched your hands. I'm just telling you, God said, I've touched your hands. What you put your hands to shall prosper. Y'all, yeah. God's prospering this ministry. He's prospering this family of God. He's prospering you not so you can think you something, some, some kind of big nut on a tree. Come on. He's, ble he's blessing you. He's prospering you so you can bless and help others to prosper. God don't want us to be poor in spirit. He don't want us to be barely making it. Come on, church. We're helping one another to be a light in this dark world, to be everything God wants us to be, to be the head, not the tail, to be the lender, not the borrower. Let me tell you this. God put this in my spirit. We don't know man nothing. I don't know anything. I don't know no man nothing but to love one another. Come on, y'all. We, we're the lender, not the borrower. You got to get that in your mentality. Stop borrowing money. If you're borrowing money, stop it. Don't do it no more. Start lending. Let me tell you this. When you lend somebody some money, don't expect to get it back. 
Come on, somebody help me up in there. If you lend somebody some money, don't expect to get it back. You give somebody $100, bless you, brother. Praise God. If they pay it back, that's fine. If they don't, don't worry about it. Amen? That's easy with 100 Can we do it with 10000 Come on, church. Don't expect to get back. Just do what God told you to do. It's a blessing up in here today, y'all. Let me tell you. Good Lord, I can't hardly wait. I'm about to bust. Yeah, let's get our ushers up here. It's time to give unto the Lord. How many loves to give? Yeah. Amen. You can't now give God. I will tell you this, y'all. Good Lord, I'm getting ahead. I can't help it. But I'll tell you this right now. We, Because uh, this day is special. Yep. I said yesterday, God was putting my spirit. This is a special day. And it is a special day. God has done some stuff already, but... Man, somebody already gave $500 to the food bank. You know, it's amazing. When God puts in your heart to do something for the people here. See, today we're going to bless the families here. Every family here is going to be blessed. God said to do that. But isn't it amazing when God puts something in your heart and he shows out even bigger? We're blessing the, the families here with everything you see. With drinks, with desserts, with eggs, with bread. And uh, also some meat coming, praise God. Somebody help me up in here. Everybody's going to be blessed with some meat up in here today. But isn't it amazing when you, God puts it in your heart to bless the people, the family of God. And I'm going to give you a scripture for that in just a little bit, okay? When I get to preach, praise the Lord. But it's amazing when, you, when God puts it in your heart and you just be obedient, you do what God does. Didn't realize that $500, $500 was going to come in here to this food bank today. Well, I might as well just let the rest of it out, I reckon. Come on, y'all. Y'all getting ready to rejoice. This, I was going to leave this for my message, but I can't. Not only did we get $500 for the food bank this morning, we got 30 ounces. 30 ounces of silver. 30 pieces. That's going toward our mortgage. Come on, y'all. 30 ounces of silver. Silver's probably running about $16, $17 an ounce right now. So this is a good, well over $450 toward our mortgage. That's awesome, man, to tell you. Y'all know how much an ounce of silver is? 30 ounces of silver here, y'all. Along with the $500 for the food bank. And no telling what else is going to come in. Amen. God's awesome, church. He's wonderful. See, we're giving God the praise, the glory, and the honor for everything he's doing here. And I'm going to give you a scripture in just a little bit when I get to preach. Because this ministry, we do take care of those outside. We minister to people, y'all, people we don't even know. People that uh, may not cross the path but one time, but we minister, we give them food. But God says when the opportunity arises, bless the faithful that are in the house. And church, we want to bless you this morning. Amen. Every family in here. So y'all just get ready, get ready, get ready. How many is ready? Oh, I'm ready. Praise God. Whose time is it? Uh, bless Micah. Big Micah. Y'all get Micah. I'm telling y'all, God is really moving on Micah and Jacob. Boy, he's really moving in their lives. And y'all just going to be surprised about some stuff that God's using these young men with. Amen. God's good. Micah, if you would bless this offering for me. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for the stay. Thank you for letting us come here to uh, glorify your name, Lord. Uh, I'm just going to bless this offering, Lord, and let it be used in the glorification of your name. Bless everyone here today. Bless the ones that ain't. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Come on, church. We bring our offering. If you've got an offering this morning, I encourage you to bring it. If not, go hug somebody. Tell them it sure is good to be in God's house. Well, the windows of faith and their blessings have no
Praise God. Let's give God a big old clap of praise, church. Come on. Praise the Lord. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. I want you to go ahead and be seated. We're going to do something very special right now. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to ask Belinda if she would come on up here. Praise the Lord. Y'all, Belinda has been very faithful to this ministry. Yes. She, uh, she's out here every Saturday. Well, every Friday and Saturday. But she's out here every Saturday speaking to the people, giving a word. You want to come up here? Or you want to stay down there? You want to stay down there? We'll come down there to you. Praise God. She's been very faithful to the ministry. She's been licensed through many uh, different ministry, Church of God's, uh, different ones. Well, she's licensed through this ministry. But today, y'all, we are going to do, hallelujah, praise God. Today we're going to do, and Earl, you may want to come up here beside your wife, praise the Lord. We're going to do a certificate of ordination. We're going to ordain her. Y'all give God some praise, praise God. And there's others we're going to be ordaining here in this ministry. But I want to tell you something. I praise God for her faithfulness, church. She's out here every Saturday to speak to people she don't know. They love her. These people love her out here on Saturdays, but she speaks the word. And this is an ordination that says, I ain't going to say a whole lot if I don't put my specs on. <laughs> it's saying something. I just can't read it. Praise God. Amen. I'll tell you what. Praise the Lord. Certificate of ordination. We, the undersigned recommendation request of the pastors of Living Branch Ministries, uh, have full and sufficient opportunity for judging the God-given gifts after satisfactory examination by us in regard to the Christian experience. Call to the ministry and views of Bible doctrine hereby certify that Belinda Worley was solemnly and publicly set apart ordained to the work of the gospel ministry by authority and order of the pastors here at Living Branch Ministries, Taylor, South Carolina, on the third day of April 2016. Now before, I'm going to go ahead and give you this, but I want to give you some scripture. Y'all just hold on for a minute. Uh, we're doing this publicly. Can I get amen? amen? But let me give you a scripture here. And Belinda, it's also for you. Uh, we'll be all right, baby. Jeremiah 1.5 says this. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, Jeremiah 1.5. Jeremiah 1.5. It says, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. John 15, 16 says this. You have not chosen me. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me. But I have chosen you. Then he says, and ordained you. That you should go and bring forth what? Much fruit. That your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. I don't take ordination lightly, y'all. I believe right now from this day forward, Belinda has brought forth fruit, amen? amen, amen. We see that fruit by what she does. Y'all, it's not always by what we say. It's the things we do. Amen. We can say a lot of stuff. I like to see fruit in people's lives, and I've seen that fruit in, in your life, Belinda. She works the food bank. She preaches to the, teaches the people out here. And it's for my honor to ordain you today into this ministry to preach and to proclaim the gospel. I know she's been waiting for a long time. She's been waiting for a while, y'all. She's been patient. I don't jump the gun. And that people tell you, I don't jump the gun. I wait on the Lord. I want it to be his timing. Father, I thank you for this woman of God. Lord, from this day forward, as we ordain her into the ministry, Lord, let her be used for your glory. Everything that is said, everything that is done, Father, let it come forth from your word. Lord, we lose your anointing. We lose your mighty power, your mighty strength. We lose your blood to cleanse and to cover, Father. Lord, we know the past is in the past. It's the new beginning, Father, to proclaim the gospel, to bring forth fruit meant for repentance in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, let that fruit multiply. Oh, Lord God, let it multiply. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you all the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
I want you to know that I love every, every last one of you. I know uh, when, when Earl come up court in one time, <laughs> he did it one time. <clears throat> Matter of fact, the first time, first day I seen him, he said, I'm going to marry you. I said, oh, yeah? He said, yeah. And he did. Uh, 27 years. Thank you, Jesus. But I told him, he told me, when I, when, I, when I first saw me, he said, I love you. And I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> because when I tell somebody I love them, I truly mean it. It's from the heart. And when I tell you children that I love you, it's all the way to the heart. I love you. And I care about you. And I care about your souls and your families. I care. And I thank God for this because... I've worked 35 years, 35 years, and I've gave and I've gave and I've gave, but I've never gave as much as Jesus gave. Amen. But I thank God that he helped me along this way, and I am so proud of this today, and I thank the Lord for it. Thank you, Pastor. You know, as I say all the time to people, Every time I see somebody, I tell them, it starts at the head, and this is the head right here. Amen. Brother Donnie and Sister Dana is one in marriage, and it starts at the head. And I'm covered. I'm covered because it starts at the head. And I'm, I'm under the flow. And i like to also say, too, I, I was going to say it when Sister Belinda was up here. I was going to get on my knees, and I was going to say I'm covered by her, too. Because she's short, you know, so I've got to get down to be covered, you know. <laughs> God is good. Yes, all the time, all the time. But I'd like to say I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate y'all standing by us in the loss of our son. It's getting easier because I'm still, I'm still walking, sister, into peace. I'm still trying to walk in that peace. I, I break down at times, but God's always there. He's always there to to reach down and pull me back up. And I appreciate, pastors, I appreciate y'all, and I love you very much. And I want you to know that. And if any, any time any of you church people needs me, like I was telling Brother Don, I'm always here. I'll stop what I'm doing and I'll come and help. And I love you. Well, praise God. God is so good. God is so awesome, y'all. This is what family's about, being there for one another, y'all. Yeah, we never know what we're going to face, never know what we're going to go through, and it's good to have people around you, amen. Boy, I tell you what, I'm so excited about today. I just want to, I just want to bless y'all. We love blessing the people. Let's, John, come up here, brother. John got some bad news uh, from the doctor, but we're not going to receive it, amen. Come up here, brother. Uh, Stan, can you give me some oil? Oh, never mind, I see it, brother. It's right here. Oh, some of you prayer warriors to come up here. We're going to pray for this man of God. They seen something in his body they don't really like. Amen. I'm here to tell you we don't like it either. Amen. We don't like it either. And John, I know we can get fearful of a report from a doctor. But I'm here to tell you, brother, we believe the report of the Lord. Lord, I'm asking you to heal and to touch this man of God. Father, from the top of his hold, the Father, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the living God. Father, we lose your healing touch. Father, we know that by your stripes we are healed. Lord, there's not no might, maybe what. No, we are healed. Lord, this spot right now, let it be gone, Father. This mass right now, let it be gone in the name of Jesus by the power of the living God. Father, we speak your word right now. Be gone. I see you lying in the blue blood. I said live. We speak life to every part of this body. Life. Life in the name of Jesus. Your word says to live. Your word says to live. Your word says to live. We speak life right now in the name 
name of Jesus, by the power of the living God. Father, let your peace right now, Father, your peace be upon him, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, peace that surpasses all understanding, Father. Lord God, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And Father, we speak your words of healing over this body. We speak your words of healing over this vessel from the top of his head to the soles of his feet in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Come on, church. Let's give God some praise. Come on. John, we believe the report of the Lord. The report of the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Y'all, it's not good to get some news from the doctor, but I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Amen. God is good. He's awesome. There's nothing he cannot do. Praise the Lord. Wow. Y'all, this is going to be a different service today. I'm here to tell you. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Stan, God bless you, You brother. know, it's important to know that they're just practicing physicians. That's right. We know the great physician. Yes. So, you know. That's right. That's right. That's right. Praise the Lord. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want to make some quick announcements. We've got a lot going on, and I'm, uh, I'm going to sing today for somebody they... I had a nasty text last night. No, it wasn't nasty. I'm kidding. They just said, if you don't sing, just watch your back, is what they said. No. She didn't say that. I promise she didn't. I'm just having fun. I'm having fun. Listen, thank you to everyone who gave in the 30 pieces of silver offering, okay? Um, with everything we've got through today, somebody handed me uh, 30 pieces of silver this morning. No, it wasn't this right here. But... Uh, um, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about this. I was going to wait another week or two, but I'll, I'll tell you probably the reason on this. But uh, with everything that we got today, we are at $235.42. And so that will be split in half for the women and the men, uh, 117 and some change for each group. So uh, our condos paid for, praise the Lord. And... Uh, and I, w I want to tell you real quick on the condo, uh, especially the men are going, they've seen some pictures of it and stuff. And You can go online and see the place if you want to. You can go to, I think it's um, resort at governorscrossing.net, I believe it is, if you want to look at where we're staying as far as the main facility. Uh, the condo belongs to my mom and dad and about 12 or 14 other couples. You know, it's one of those, they don't call them timeshares no more. To me, it's a timeshare, but they call it a partnership. Everything's politically correct now. And I told mom, I says, it's a timeshare. She says, it's a partnership. I said, whatever. But <laughs> anyway, it, it happens to be their week from Sunday to Sunday. And when we saw that our trip was going to be that week, uh, for us to go to the men's conference to stay at the hotel where the, facility, where the venue is actually at, to, for four to a room, it's like $105 or $110 a piece. Uh, actually, I can tell you. I can't remember. Um, Four per room, $110 per person. And for somebody like Pastor who wants to be by, who'd love to be by himself, it ain't going to happen this time, I hate to tell you, Pastor, unless we put him on the couch. <laughs> but cause he just says it because he's a snorer and he don't want to sleep with another man. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. But even for somebody who wants to stay by themselves, it's $235. For two nights, which is not bad when you think where you're at, but it's, it's two nights and then uh, uh, continental breakfast Friday morning, Saturday morning. Saturday morning, you might as well hang it up because there's an 8 o'clock impartation service. This boy don't like 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, so I'm going to be good just to get up and be over there. Um, but anyway, uh, Mom said, well, you know, you, you guys can use it. And the first thing out of my mouth, if it was just Esther and me and the kids or my brother and sister I'm going, she wouldn't, you know, she doesn't tell us, you know, y'all got to pay us back. They pay it. They've paid the regime fee like six months or a year in advance. I don't remember how they do it. And they got a place at the beach they do the same thing with. But see, they can't get around. So they haven't been up there in over a year. And so um, she said, y'all can use it if you want. The first thing came out, I said, well, we'll at least pay the regime fee back, which is $300. 
And a lot of people think, well, you got it for free. Why, why worry with it? I just think it's the right thing to do since it's not just family staying there. You know, like I said, if it was me and Esther and the kids going up, mom and dad wouldn't even take money even if we offered it to them because we tried to do that before. Nope, nope, this is family stuff. Y'all have it. You have at it. You know, and so I just feel it's the right thing to do. And the good thing, guys, about us, I know some of you are early risers. We don't have to be packed up and out of there by 8 o'clock for a 8 o'clock service on Saturday morning. We can come with a, the place is ours till Sunday afternoon. So we may just let Sister Dana preach on Sunday and we'll just hang over another night. <laughs> I'm kidding, okay? I'm kidding. But we'll be, we have a little bit more leisure. So after the service, which last year was about two and a half to three hours long, so, um, it's just the impartation service, you know. And so um, we'll be able to go back and pack up and we could even eat lunch if we want to or whatever before we hit the road and then come home while all of them are packed up like this with toothpicks in their eyes <laughs> having to cover. You know, so I mean, it's just, there's some opportunity there. The, the, the downfall is we're two and a half, about, not two and a half, about a mile and a half to two miles from the venue. And you know how traffic is, especially in the middle of Rod Run. So it's going to be a little tough for us on that. I think there's a back way we can go and skip some of that traffic. We'll have to play with it before we go over there. But, but that's the reason why I feel like we're paying for it. It's just to do the right thing. Because uh, mom and dad could have easily said, well, I've offered it to somebody else in the group and they've done paid us. You know, that, that's their option. If, if the family doesn't want to use it, they can offer to sell that week. And when it's somebody in the partnership, they just get their regime feedback. So that's the reason why we're doing that. Uh, one thing that was not mentioned, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that. Two weeks, we'll be back two weeks from today. So with that in mind, the men that are going next Sunday after morning service, I know we just did one last week, uh, we want to have one more meeting, and so it may be a little longer, it may not be from, from last week, because I know we kind of crammed in a whole lot last week being um, Resurrection Sunday, but be prepared, men, if you're going on the trip, to stay a little bit after church next Sunday morning after the service, uh, just discuss a few things, Gary's put together a menu, Lord have mercy, and... Um, you know, Sandy. Sandy. Oh, okay. Yeah, we should know Gary can't do that, huh? No, I'm kidding. I'm teasing. Uh, but you know, he's put together a menu, and uh, a lot of the stuff I think we'll be able to get from the food bank uh, supplies. One thing is not mentioned. We need to remember: starting next Sunday night is a four-night uh, community revival, and it may—it's probably up there. Uh, no, it's not. It's just a spring revival. So let me tell you what's happening. This is what you need, Pastor. You need some of these. I'll never have to use Roy's glasses again. And I'm younger than the preacher, and I need readers. Next Sunday night, um, it's 6 o'clock. Yeah, there it is, 6 o'clock. Pastor Burroughs will be preaching at Calvary Christian Fellowship. There's four churches involved here, and the preachers are not preaching at their own churches, okay? But next Sunday night, 6 o'clock, we'll be over at Calvary Christian Fellowship just down the road. If you don't know where that's at, it's between the two red lights is all I know, about two and a half miles down on the right. So you go back towards uh, the Little Rebel, go through that red light, it's about a quarter mile or so there on the right. It sits back off the road, that church does, but we'll be there at 6 o'clock next Sunday night. Monday night, the 11th at 7 o'clock, we'll be at Jubilee Baptist Church. Anybody does, does anybody not know where that church is at? Okay, if you go back up to Little Rebel Red Light, I'm not good with roads, some of you can probably tell me that. Go to the red light at Little Rebel and the Sphinx, turn right, the church is about a half mile down on the right. Okay, it, it, but uh, we'll be there, Pastor uh, Donnie will be preaching that night. Tuesday, April 12th at Faith Temple, the pastor from Calvary Christian Fellowship, Pastor uh, Phil Lord will be preaching back here at Faith Temple, back down the opposite way from us, about a half mile down on the left. April 13th, at, right here at home. Uh, on Wednesday the 13th, Pastor from um, Jubilee Baptist, Pastor R. R. Garrett will be here ministering, okay? So, um, singers, musicians, I think we're doing our own music at our churches, so I'll need the singers and musicians here that Wednesday night especially. That starts next week, and so just keep that in mind, because uh, we, we didn't mention it last week, and we just need to keep that fresh on our minds, okay? Uh, and it's a great opportunity just to be refreshed. Okay, I got about three people. It's a great opportunity to just let the Lord refresh you. 
Praise the Lord. Because I don't need last week's. We had a great week last week. We had two people saved in the in the service with at the food bank from from the. Uh, the, the youth program, I know there was at least one healing, if not more. We had some salvations and some great ministry going around the altar last Sunday morning during service. Last Sunday night at Home of the Heart, we had 15 men stand up and accept Christ or rededicate their heart to the Lord. And that's fantastic. But I can't live on last week. I need something fresh today. And next week, I can't live on today. I need something fresh for that day. So come to these meetings. Don't just come on Sunday night because we'll be here at our church or on Wednesday night to support our pastor. Or, 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 or you know, come to each meeting. Expect something from the Lord. Because the preacher ain't going to do it for you. Yeah, the Lord's anointed that man to give the word and all. And, and you know, but come expecting from the Lord and let Him move in your heart. And watch what happens in our meetings. Because I tell you, especially if, if anything, if we have meetings, anything like what's going on in here on Sundays, it just gets better from here, I'm telling you. So just some word for thought. Morning, man, brother. More, oh, yes, thank you, Pastor. Morning Manna started today. I think we had four or five there this morning. Uh, Pastor uh, Ray is, is heading that up. And I think you've got a sign-up sheet back there. Somebody wants to teach on a Sunday. Do you have that? Or? It was back there on the table out in the foyer. If you're interested in teaching one of the Morning Manna, man, I want to say Manna, and I don't know why. Morning Manna sessions, uh, you can see him or put your name on the list. If not, I guess he'll be teaching it. So... Um, but remember that, that's at 9.30 on Sunday morning. So, uh, and it's at in here and back, in the back. So keep that in mind. And uh, any birthdays in the month of April? Any birthdays? Stand to your feet real quick. Let's see who we have. Uh-huh, okay. Birthdays, all right. Praise the Lord. Okay, you sit down. How about any anniversaries? Anniversaries. Just one. So this, yeah. <laughs> oh, you one of these, it's not a birthday, it's a birth month. Is that it? Okay. Uh, Earl says he takes gifts the whole month of April. So <laughs> I really uh, don't know what to sing this morning. I've asked a couple people and, and this kept coming back. I know I sang this just a few weeks back, but I want to sing it again this morning for, uh, for Roy and Gail. You've already got it recorded, so if you want to record it again, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind And it's closer now can almost hear the Father. You know, I just messed up on that. Let's do it again. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll get better at it each time, huh? <laughs> I'll just mark that last part off. Okay? <laughs> Here we go. I hear the sound. Of a mighty rushing wind And it's closer now Than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet Come 
Prophecies fulfilling signs of the times, they're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the Father as he says, Son, go get my children. what I feel. We just won't have to worry about those stinking reports from the doctors that don't, don't know any better. Who's had back trouble and God's healed you? I know there's some in here. Who's been healed? Come get up here quickly. Get up here quickly. Come on up. Anybody been healed of back trouble? Get up here. Mm. Y'all stretch your hands this way. Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus heal. The devil's a liar. Yeah. Mm. Touch, heal. Mm. a little bit different today, I know. It's about what the Lord wants to do, though, y'all. you got to remember that. It's not our servants. It's not our church. It's His. said in Matthew chapter 10 verse 7 and as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons freely you have received freely give yeah. you're healed uh, amen
You know that script? Is that in Romans where that's found? It says we're more than conquerors through Christ. Yeah, I can't remember. Romans 8. You know, J.B. Phillips wrote a modern translation of the Bible. I like the way he put that verse right there. Instead of we're more than conquerors, he wrote, we win. That's the way he translated that. We win. Hallelujah. Sickness has no part of us. Can't take control of us. Hallelujah. We're going to do a new one. You've probably heard it, but it's new to us. <laughs> I am the Lord. I'm the Almighty God. I am the one for whom nothing is too hard. I am the shepherd and I am the door. I am the good news to the bound and the poor.
your comfort and relief from your stress. I am strength, I am faith, I am love, I am power. I am your freedom in this very hour. Go ahead and give God a big old clap of praise. Come on, just give God a big old clap of praise. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. You know, today, I feel in my spirit, this is like a sacrifice of praise. We've got so many testimonies up in here of the awesomeness of God and what God has done. And the enemy is fighting with everything he can to stop it. But I'm here to tell you, sometimes you've got to sacrifice that testimony. You've got to give that testimony. You've got to tell the devil he's a, he's a defeated foe. He's lost the battle. We've won the victory. Come on, y'all. We're more than overcomers. We're cleansed by the blood. We're filled by the spirit of the living God. Come on, y'all. We're on our way to heaven. Come on. Somebody give me some help in here. We are on our way to heaven, bought with a price, filled with the Spirit of God. Sometimes you got to praise your way through. And we got some praise reports. Pat, I want you to come up here, hon. Give your praise report. Come on. I want you to tell everybody what God has done. Y'all, this is a miracle. How many believe in miracles? How many knows God's working? Let me tell y'all something. Ever since God took me down on top of that mountain, put us up there that we didn't pay for, we didn't do nothing, everything was paid for, God began to bless the people in this house. Come on, church. There's blessings you're going to receive. God's blessing. God is moving. And anytime somebody gets blessed in this house, guess what we ought to be doing? Praising. We ought to be praising God, worshiping God, thanking God for somebody else's blessing. When I got the news for these women, what God is doing, guess what? I got happy. I started giving God the praise. I love it when God blesses people. I love it when God blesses you. How many want a blessing up in here? I mean, there's some coming too, way, man. Pat, give that testimony. What's God done? First of all, Pastor Donnie, I got attacked last night. I was sick. Oh. 
I was going to call this morning and say I'm not able to make it. And I thought, well, I'll go and I'll stay through praise and worship and I'll just ease out. Of course, when I met you, Pat, we got something to do today. My pleasure. My pleasure. So I'm here. Anyway, uh, Nicole and I have been looking for a place to live. We searched and searched. Nobody can afford $1,500, $1,600 a month. That's impossible. The Lord was sent a mobile home my way. It's a four-bedroom mobile home. It's a fixer-upper. I paid $600 for it. It's paid for. But God. But God. It's not the end. It's only the beginning. Glory be to God. It's only the beginning. Because God is, Jesus is coming to the trailer park. But, but, he has restored my daughter. I know who my daughter is again. See, God has done that. And now we're able to live together and function as a family. And he has restored that. And it's only the beginning. And I give him all praise and glory because nothing is impossible with God. Come on, church. We ought to give God some praise. What a tremendous blessing. What, what, come on, what Pat didn't tell you. At one time she was homeless. At one time she didn't have no place to go. Somebody had to take her in. And look what God has done now. And she's been faithful. I'm telling you, she works at food bank. She does stuff. And God is faithful. Church, if we'll just be faithful to him, he, he's faithful to us. Can I get amen up in here? Somebody else might have a testimony before we bring... Yes, she's the leader of the women's ministry now. She was one standing outside one time drinking 12 pack of beer every night. Amen. And God has restored. Y'all, he's a restoring God. This is, what this, this is a special Sunday today, y'all. This is a special day today. Who else has got a testimony before we get Laura? Laura, come on up here, June. Praise God. We got Amanda too in a minute. Let's get June. Then we're going to get Amanda. Praise God. Y'all, God is doing something up in here. Psalms, get it in your get it in your spirit. Psalms one verses one through three. Praise God. Um, last Sunday, um, towards the end of service, I got a text message from my brother saying that my niece was on the way to the hospital because they thought she was losing the baby. Well, I came up and asked everybody to pray, and then um, about probably a couple of hours after church. I got a text from my brother, and all it says is, we've got a heartbeat. So praise God for that. However, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, this is her third difficult pregnancy. Um, and we found out that the baby's head is actually in the birth canal right now. So um, the body can grow, but the head can't. We've got three more weeks to go. They're going to deliver her at 30 weeks. Um, but just pray that she does not have brain damage because her head can't grow. That's what we're concerned with right now. Yeah. So please continue to pray for her and praise God. Thank you so much. Praise God. God's the giver of life, y'all. Praise God. And we speak life to that baby right now in the name of Jesus. Who else has got a testimony right fast they want to give? Because I'm telling you, Laura's really got one. Who else has got? Oh, I'm sorry. Amanda has one. Come on up. I just wanted to thank God for where he's brought me and Ken through over the years. Uh, we had car trouble this past week that was over $600. And I can remember a day when we would have just been begging and crying for God. And it's so easy to take for granted what God has given you over time. It just so happened that two weeks ago, we had gotten a new credit card with a very, very awesomely low interest rate to where it, it's so little until putting it on that card. And it was just a blessing compared to many years ago. And I just want to thank God for where he's brought us through that it didn't have to be a crisis. It was just a little setback. Praise God, church. God is in control. Amen. He makes a way when there seems to be no way. Praise the Lord. Anybody else got a testimony up in here? Come on, Julie. Praise the Lord. It is. My Amen. A lot of y'all don't even know this, but just a few years ago, John, my husband went to the kidney doctor, whatever the technical name is, and they found a spot on his kidney. And he comes home and he tells me, well, they're going to set me up an appointment to take out my kidney. And I said, no, you're kidding me. And he said, no, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> so he comes to church here and he gets his hands laid on and believing for God's report. And the following week he goes back 
between that night when he got prayed for and the next appointment, he went for another MRI or CAT scan, whatever it is, and he goes back to the doctor. The doctor has read the report and says, Mr. God said, I don't know what you're doing, but that spot's gone. So I claim your healing in Jesus' name because he is a God who is able. He did it for my husband, and he'll do it for you. I receive it, John. Receive that word. Praise God. That's a word from the Lord. Amen. Anybody else got a testimony they want to give? Come on. Come on, Sydney. How do Usually when you apply for Social Security Disability, it takes you two, three, four years, and that's with an attorney, and they get half your money. Well, I applied in January, and I was approved. I just got my letter that I've been approved. And, and that's God. I, and no attorney. That is God, praise the Lord. That just don't happen. When we came to this church over a little over a year ago now, I came for food. My uh, niece brought me here for food. And <clears throat> up to this day, even though I've gotten Social Security, we were just making it. We were, we were beggars. We were here at the church begging. And everybody, everybody in this church showed us the love and we're going to be able to show some love back to everybody, to this church. We all thank you. We praise you. This is the greatest church on God's earth. God's here. I don't know where he's at today, but he's here. This church is made up of great people, praise God. we got some great people in the house. Anybody else got a testimony before we bring Laura up here? Anybody want to give it? Tell you, God's good. Go ahead. Come on, Brian. Come on up here, brother. Yeah, we serve an awesome God. This is a different kind of service, but this is important anyway for what we're fixing to do. Praise the Lord. Brian, God bless you, brother. I'm just going to give you a short version, but I was addicted to drugs for about 25 years. Smoked cigarettes for 30 years. Um, my dad's right here. You know, he prayed for me, went to church, and, and I, did, I ran from God. I used to, I used to go out and, I, you know... I don't know what the abominable sin is, but whatever it is, that's what I'm doing. And I mean, I verbally spoke that because I didn't want no part of it. And then, um, and then God just worked his thing and let me do my thing and, and brought me to where I had to come to myself. And I had to realize that I needed something. I needed somebody because I couldn't do it. And, and it came a point in time where I, I would go to bed at night and I said, Lord, don't give up on me because I didn't know what to do. I was a goner. I, I was a dead man walking. You know, so we're dead in our transgressions. And, and until I came to myself and then realized that, that I needed God, then there was nothing I could do except for just pray that he wouldn't give up and turn me over to a reprobate mind. And, and he didn't. He didn't give up on me. And, and he let me go through some things. And I came through and ended up coming down here in 2008 and from Indiana. And, and God gave me a, a, a message for people. And, and witnessing and just reaching out to people. And, and I, I wouldn't do that on my own because it's just not me. But, but it, there was a lost, like, you know, there was a lost world. And I came here, it's probably been what, a couple months, three months, something, I don't even know. But I came here and, I, and, and that's what I, I just like, it's the message we have here is there's, a, there's lost people. And the first thing I did was get involved in the food ministry and, and, and got plugged in immediately and, and got to see the blessing that of God in my life and, and just handing out to people because I needed help. It wasn't food that I needed, but I needed, I needed a different kind of food. I needed the spiritual food to, to help me to be who God wants me to be. And, and I just praise him that, he, that the nights I laid in bed did not give up on me. He didn't. And it brought me to where I am today. And I thank God for my beautiful wife because without her, I would truly be lost. Praise God. Come on, church. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says God mercy, God's mercy endures forever. I thank God for his mercy. I thank God he didn't give up on me. He didn't give up on Brian. All of us in here got that testimony. Anybody else got a testimony before we bring Laura up here? Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't God awesome? Yes, he is. Amen. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. I'd just like to thank God for life. 
this morning. I really just like to thank God for what he has been doing in me as a woman and as a woman of God. I just thank God because God is a God that he's sovereign. He loves. And I just thank God on this week, um, this past two weeks, I had, had a hard, kind of a hard week. One of, our, one of my bosses, she died of cancer. And I went to the funeral with me and my husband, and um, they had us with the T-shirts, and, you know, her name was Terry Schubert. You know, we, we saw it in the audience, or, you know, in the church, and I just, I just felt some type of way all week long. I just had been talking to God about people. People. We see each other every day at the job. We talk to each other, you know, people. And she died when she died. I just watched my big boss. She was on the pulpit and she was asking to come up and give a testimony. See, I'm sitting and I'm saying, you knew this woman for 10 years. Nobody wouldn't move. The parents, you know, some of the parents, they came up and, you know, they talked and, and they said what type of person she was. But the side that I was sitting on, nobody moved. Three years, I knew her three years, and some of them knew her nine, ten years, and they would not move. Fear had gripped them from speaking. So, the person that I am, I just got up. And I went to the pulpit. I said what the Lord wanted me to say. But in the process of saying it, God, I, I felt some type of way. I looked at the people's faces. And that's something God always said. When you're on the pulpit, you're anywhere. Please don't stare. So when I was, when I was standing up there, I felt my eyes going down. And, and like rolling across because I was angry in my spirit because nobody would get up. So I said, you know what, Lord, I will go wherever you send me. I will, I will be a spokeswoman. I will be a speaker, whoever you want me to be. I don't know who got saved that day because afterward, everybody was coming up to me and saying, what such nice words, you're such a motivated speaker. But that was not in my heart. My heart was that she had children sitting on this side and a husband and you worked with her for many of years and you would not move because of fear. My prayer is today is that the spirit of fear will be bound up and cast out because God has a plan for us. He needs us to go into the world and not be afraid of what the people say. Amen. Yes, and yes, I'm, I always joke around on my job and I say things, you know, I say little odds and ends to the people and I say, oh, because I'm, I think I'm like, it's only three blacks on my job and everybody else, you know, they got, color I called them and I said I said to her when she came to see me on that Monday and I stood over her till I got my hug maybe that's why I was so heavy because I waited until everybody else got there and I said to her I'm here I took her and I hugged her but the thing was death has no departure I'm not going to stay up here because I feel some type of way because death has no departure because after death my father tells me that it's life eternal and because it is life eternal you know I can live this walk I can talk this walk but basically I have to go on because God needs me you know I tell folks you may not know your gift but on that day I found out who I was. I am important to the kingdom. You are important to the kingdom. If you, if you have the birthright of a Christian, have you been born again? You got the right to stand up and proclaim your sister and your brother. You got the right to go on and be who you are in Christ. Stand tall. 
stand up, let the spirit of God stand up in you. I didn't say the spirit of Satan. I said the spirit of God stand up in you. And when it stands up in you, make sure you know who you are. Because when people start talking and bickering and, and complaining, God ain't got nothing to do with that. He's not a God of complaining. He's not a God that he will forget you in your due season. This is what God wants from his people. Be strong. Stand up. Let the bold soldiers stand up in you. Don't stay quiet. Say something that somebody else's soul may be saying. This is my testimony, y'all. When God returns... I don't want to, I don't want to say I did not do what he told me to do. I don't want to give an excuse. I don't want to do that. I want to tell God, Lord, can I have my crown? Speak the gospel. Live the gospel. Walk the gospel. Walk upright. Be right. Because people are looking at you. People are listening to you and who you are. Once you proclaim Jesus, you got to live like Jesus. You cannot live any old type of way and people are watching you because you are not living right. You need to stand up and proclaim. You don't know what that word means. You need to step out. Stop stepping in to the houses that you're not supposed to be and the things that you are doing wrong. Step up into what you have been called to do. If you was dipped down in the water, let the sins begin to move. Do not, do not go backwards because there's nothing back there. Everything for you is coming, goes up. If you see yourself going down, you got no business, no business, no business in the crack house. You got no business in the whorehouse. You got no business around people when you're weak and you know you're weak. You got no business. So your business should be trying to get to heaven. It's a reward, yes. You're going to get paid for what you do here on earth. A reward of seeking him. And loving him, Pastor. I just love you guys. And I work, like I told you, around all of y'all. I talk like I talk around all of y'all. And I tell the Lord all the time, I don't know why. My boss always rubbed me. She always got to touch me. She said, I just love you, Caroline. We go down the hallway, and she got to hug me. She said, I just love you, Caroline. And I tell her all the time, I love you too. Is there something about me? But I just thank God for everyone in this building. And if you're going through anything today, and if you can't stop doing what you're doing and it's keeping you bound, you need to pray. Amen. You need to pray and tell God, I want to live better. I want to do better. I want to. And you can do this thing. You can do it. You, I, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. I can do all things. All things. All things. Through Christ which strengthens me. That's my testimony. Praise the Lord. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. We're strengthened by the power of the living God. Amen. See, anybody else got a testimony before we bring Laura up here? This part's not really so much a testimony, but uh, where we used to go to church, you know, when we were hurt, we dropped out of church and didn't go for close to 20 years, I guess. And I'm ashamed to say that I turned loose of God's hand. My testimony is he never turned loose of mine. And it sure is good to be home. Oh, Lord, what a testimony. Praise God. Y'all, God is so awesome. He is so good. Praise the Lord. Doc, you got a testimony, bro? Yeah, I was sitting here. I was just feeling led 
to share uh, my salvation experience. I've never done this in public. I've shared it individually with people. But apparently there's somebody here that needs to hear this. Uh, I got saved when I was 21 years old. We had a revival meeting, attending a Baptist church in Pickens. And uh, had a revival meeting that week up there Sunday night. And the uh, Holy Spirit got to dealing with me during the service, just tugging at my heart. It never happened to me before, you know. Uh, end of the service, they gave an altar call, and the uh, Holy Spirit spoke to me. You need to be saved. It wasn't a, a con condemnation or anything. You sorry dog, you, you know, just... Just gently, it's just a statement of fact. You need to be saved. thought I was already saved at the time. I didn't go up that night. Following Sunday night, altar call was given. You need to be saved. Well, then the enemy started speaking to me. I was dating my ex-wife at the time. Her name's Kim. My ex-mother-in-law's name's Carol. And I started hearing, uh, well, what would Kim think? What would Carol think? What will your parents think about you being baptized a second time? Well, recently I got to thinking about that. You know, what did Satan fall to? Pride. What was this a devil appealing to pride it don't matter what anybody else thinks it only matters what God thinks I went up that night I asked the Lord to forgive me and save me and he filled my heart with love I just wanted to hug everybody in the church but there's somebody here that needs to hear this today don't let pride keep you from the greatest gift that's ever been given to mankind. And that's a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and His shed blood. Church, that's the greatest gift you will ever have is salvation. The healing of the body is good, but if God healed my body and my soul was going to hell, what good would it do? Amen. I don't want a healing in my body if my soul's going to hell, my spirit and soul. I want to be saved. That's the greatest gift you could possibly have. I waited a long time. And deserved a lot of things to this church. And a lot of people. And I stood up and said the things that the Lord wants me to say. But I pray to the Lord. Sister, I know that you know my Lord. And I know everybody that stands up and says something to praise my Lord <laughs> knows him. Amen. Um, one of my favorite scriptures is the 12th chapter of Revelation. <laughs> when they threw Satan and all of his angels out of heaven, God said, you can't be here anymore because you are a liar. You are a thief and a murderer. You don't want to do what's right in my heaven. And there's not going to be any of this corruption and crying and pain and suffering in heaven. And if you want it bad enough, you got to work for it. But Jesus did the main thing that we needed to do. He went to the cross. He suffered and he went through everything in this body so he would know everything that we go through with. And everything that we experience. And believe me, I've been on this earth quite a few years. So I've seen quite a few things. And I've done quite a few wrong things. 
things. But you know what? There's not one thing that I've done that Jesus hadn't forgiven me from. And my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And if you want to go to heaven and you ask him for forgiveness, he will not turn you away. Never will he turn anybody away. So like she says, that scripture, when he throwed Satan out, Michael and his angels throw Satan out, and he said, beware the inhabitants of the earth. The accuser of the brethren is cast down. He's going to accuse you. Would you say you're a liar? Because Jesus said that I'm forgiven. So I don't have none of that on me no more. No matter what it is. But he said, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. And they loved not their lives and the death. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. And you've got to stand up and say, you're a liar. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you accuse me of or whatever you do. You don't have to put up with it. You can say, Jesus is my Lord. And he threw you out of heaven. All that God had to say, Michael, sick him. <laughs> he's just like Elisha said, there's more of us than there are of them. We've got angels protecting us. We've got angels looking after us. You know? <laughs> If you know that you know that you know that Jesus is your Lord, you don't have to worry about none of it. You may feel bad. You might have pains every day and you might ache and suffer and whatever. But one day, you won't have to. One day, you won't have to. And you can praise the Lord if you get up and you shake those feelings off and say, Devil, get away from me. You, you, you lost at the cross. You lost at the cross. You are lost. You are a liar. I'm not going to put up with you, John. So give your testimony, no matter what it is. If somebody feels bad, look, you feel better. Because the Lord, the Lord loves you. And you know that your sins are paid for, no matter what happens. You can lift up your hands. Some of us can't even lift them up. Sometimes we've got some pain, you know what I mean? But remember, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. And they wasn't afraid of nothing. God does not give me or you or anybody the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind to the devil's a liar. Bless you, TJ. Y'all, that's the victory. That's the victory right there. Overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. That's why your testimony is so important. Y'all, I'm not going to preach no hour and a half, I promise you. Some of y'all look and say, oh my, I'm not preaching now. I got two verses. We're going to share some stuff, amen, but not right now. You got something, Vince? Come on, brother. Anybody, we got, we're going to get, Laura's got a testimony in a minute. You know, there's times that we get down. I get down. I'm a little, you know, I'm concerned about my wife, you know, with the surgery and that, and it's tried to really get me down. Then I got this on my face and that and something going on here, so I went to a dermatologist. Oh, you got a little cancer there, a little cancer there. Well, that ain't the bad kind, and... I had a Band-Aid here, Band-Aid here, Band-Aid down there, and that injection made me feel kind of sick. So after I left, <laughs> I said, Devil, you're going to pay for this one. <laughs> and the Lord says, go over to that Kmart <laughs> and go to Miracle Hill. I said, Lord, I don't feel like it, but I knew in my heart that I had to go, and God moved very powerfully. I don't like to share what happens, but let me tell you, God moves. People tell me, you got to go to this church. Oh, God's moving there and there, and God's moving here, but he's moving out there. The disciples were mainly marketplace ministries. Jesus was marketplace ministry, and that's what the Lord says to us this day. Go into the marketplaces. 
Everybody wants to go to the pulp and preach, or they want to preach in church and lay hands on the sick and all that. Let me tell you, you can be out there, you can be seeing things. Oh, greater works. God says, greater works I have for my people. That just believe me. And I'll tell you what, it was a very fruitful day. And I got home and I said, thank you, Lord. And look, devil, you're under my feet. And God, God is going to take care of my wife. I, have, I'm, I'm, I know he's going to be there because when I had double hernia surgery, they didn't even put the stuff in to knock me out. They didn't, nothing to even calm me down. They hadn't done that yet. And all of a sudden, a woman was with my wife. And she said, there's two angels behind you. Because I felt that peace before that, that stuff went in. I said, have you put it in? She said, we haven't done nothing to you yet. The IV's in, but we haven't. So I know that God, wherever we go, the peace of God, he has angels and camp around about us. I love going in the highways and byways. That stretches you. We need to be stretched. Like our brother said, God's not giving us the spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. I'll tell you, there's a boldness that'll come over you when you go onto the highways and byways, and you'll see signs, wonders, and miracles, or salvations, or whatever. But lately, I've been noticing this. God's shifting. And it, there's people out there filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, the other day, I was just one quick one. I was over at Walmart, and the lady, and the lady came up to me. I just started sharing. And all of a sudden, she grabbed my hand, and guess what? We started praying in the Holy Ghost. And that same day, that same thing happened with another woman. I walked up to her, all of a sudden, she grabbed my hand, we started praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I says, wow, Lord. So the same Holy Ghost that raised Christ from the dead, that spirit dwelleth in you and quicken you and restore you. We have resurrection power in us, and we need to release it, because this is a year of release, what God has put within you. But you'll never know until you step out in faith. I'm telling you, when you step, get out of the boat. Too many people in the boat. Simon, you know, Peter, they, none of them got out of the boat but Peter. And look what happened. So the Lord says, time to get out of the boat. I'm going to release my people into the highways and byways because we are that city set on a hill that cannot be hid. And you're going to come back with testimonies of what great and mighty things the Lord's done. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Wendy, you got a testimony too up there, huh? Okay, anybody else got a testimony? Come ahead, huh? Come on. God's good, isn't he? Praise the Lord. How are y'all today? <laughs> um, I'm sitting back there listening to everybody, and my cell phone's to tell me, Tracy, you're too young. <laughs> they, these people don't want to hear what you got to say. <laughs> um, I've been struggling lately with, uh, with a lot. Um, y'all know, and y'all seen her in here <laughs> past Sundays, my little girl, Violet. Um, my blessing, my little miracle. Um, and years ago, I got sick for, for a good while. It was about two years that I was every day in and out of the hospital, sometimes two and three times a day. And I went through a lot. And we were really young. And Hunter, who is now my husband of four years coming up, we've been together since we were 15. We're 23 now. Um, he stood by me. He could have walked away at any time and said, Lord, I ain't ready for all this. This is a lot. But the whole time, y'all, he stood by me in and out of the hospital, sleeping on the floor next to my hospital bed sometimes. And, you know, them doctors told me because I had, because I stayed so sick and I was throwing up on a regular basis, it was almost like the flu, but they couldn't find anything wrong. MRI after MRI, x-rays, colonoscopy, endoscopy at 17 years old. I went through the ringer, and I got down to about, I think it was about 98 pounds. I weigh 160 pounds today. <laughs> I might be little, but... <laughs> and uh, they told me, you know, I had a better chance from all them x-rays and radiation and stuff of having cancer by the time I was 30 than I did of having a child by the time I was 40. <laughs> He's alive. Uh, yeah. I got that baby over there. She's gorgeous. She's healthy. She's five months old now. She's, she keeps on growing. and She's a lot of my life, y'all. And I just praise God. I give him all the glory. Yeah. <laughs> and, and today, I want to let y'all know that God has been moving in my life and the lives of my family. And... My husband and I recently, we went to Crossway last week, and both of us bought a new Bible, a devotional, and we've been in it 
on a regular basis just since then. I mean, we, we're, we're getting into it, and we're trying, and we're, we're working on it, and we're... The devil's fighting us every step of the way, though, boy. Every step of the way. Just the other day, he and I got into an argument, and it, it finally faded out. And, but by the time I went to work, boy, God was, God was on me. He was on me. He said, you ain't going to stay there. You ain't going to stay in that place. I'm bringing you up. Smile. Put a smile on. I went to work. Y'all work at this amazing little restaurant called Della Ventura's down on South Buncombe. And let me tell you, the owner... Joe Della Ventura, now he is a man of God. He is a man of God. And I, I told him the other day, I told him, I said, Joe, I got some news. I said, uh, my husband rededicated his life, and we're in the Word. He said, Tracy, you couldn't have told me better news if you'd have told me you won the lottery. <laughs> he said, that's amazing. I'm so, I'm so happy for you. I'm so proud of you. And tell your husband that that I'm, I'm praying for y'all. y'all. Y'all are on my mind, and I love y'all. And I just want to thank God, and I want to thank all of y'all, because I've been in a lot of churches since the time I was a little bitty. And Donnie and Dana, y'all are amazing. God bless you. Y'all are amazing people. Every time I come into this church, I leave one more. I leave coming back. God bless y'all. Thank y'all. Praise God. God is amazing. Amen. He is amazing. Anybody else got a testimony? Laura, come on up here, hon. Praise the Lord. Oh, you got one, Stan? I'm sorry. Come on up here, Stan. Laura, if you don't mind, hon, if you'll wait just a bit. Praise God. And who else? And Joe, we got some more. Praise God. I just want to share a quick scripture. Uh, don't ever estimate what God wants to do for you. Esther had a car that was 15 years old and looked like it was about 30. <laughs> but it got her back and forth to work and we praise the Lord, it's lasted. We started looking probably six months ago at vehicles and we were saying, when the truck gets paid for, we'll get you a vehicle. And we looked at a couple different used vehicles with high mileage. We figured that's all. We, we've had issues with our credit in the past. Probably like a lot of us in here, you either don't have credit or it's somewhere in the past just gotten roughed up a good bit. So we always underestimated what we could do. And uh, we looked six months, eight months ago, and we found this vehicle she loved and drove it. But the payment was just too much. You know, we don't have to wait till the truck's paid for it. Then we looked at another place near the house, thought maybe, maybe that'll work out. It's just going to be a used vehicle. We're not going to do a whole, whole lot. It's not like we're going to go travel the world, you know, and... But the, the interest rate, it was still a used vehicle with high miles and an interest rate of 10, 12%, Ken. I'm like, that's ridiculous. I'm buying a new vehicle for that. And so, I mean, Esther's car, you just have to know, some of you have been where we, we were at. Her car, you'd crank it up in the morning, and it just it lets you know it's alive. <laughs> Let the whole neighborhood know it's alive. <laughs> And she go take off down the road, she let the whole community know it's alive, you know. And, uh, I mean, I'm just, it make all kind of noises. And then if that noise cleared up, there was something else going on. She, she'd say, there's something wrong with this car. And I'm thinking, we don't want to put a lot of money into it. The last thing we did to it, Ray, you like this, we, um, we <laughs> she, cut, she said, my, my heat stopped working. I said, you've had a belt break or something. And sure enough, the, the serpentine belt or something had broke. And uh, I was already at work. This uh, girl I worked with, her husband, uh, her husband, her dad is a mechanic in Anderson. And she just gets on the phone and said, Daddy, I need this, blah, 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 blah. And he said, well, get it down to me. So I just took the day off. I told my boss, I said, i got to get the vehicle worked on. I drove it from Greenville all the way to Anderson with no belt and watched that it, it was a cold day, thankfully, but what was funny is you'd figure in town that it would get hotter, it got cooler. I couldn't understand. Charged me only 25 bucks if you need to put a new belt on it. And I'm thinking, well, if we can just band-aid it a little longer. So then we finally, I don't know how we did what we did. I don't know if we just saw a commercial on TV or something, but Esther's, Esther's brave. It's funny, I can get up in front of people and sing and do this, but I don't want to go ask somebody something or get on the phone and ask. She'll do that. <laughs> She won't do what I do, but then she'll do what I don't want to do. It's real funny. And so she gets on the phone, talks to me. Oh, come on in here. We'll see what kind of deal we can put together for you. 
And I didn't think we could do it. And we spent all day at this Ford dealership. And we figured, you know what? If we can get about 4%, I'd be happy. I didn't think that'd be possible. And they come back at the end of the day, and they said, we got you approved. And I'm like, okay, we got you. And it was a payment we could, we could deal with. It's probably a little more than what we really want, but we could deal with it. It's not going to break the bank. And what he told me, that the, he come back, the, the sales manager, I think it was, come back and says, we got you approved at 1.9%. Yes. And one of them made mention of something to us that stuck with me. I can't remember exactly how he put it. He says, stop being so hard on yourself. You remember that? There was a time, I want to read this real quick. I know it's late and there's still some more stuff. There was a time that I went through, through some things as a youth pastor. And I'm no perfect person. None of us are. But if there was any other time I could have really easy, easily turned my back on God, it would have been then. And a minister gave me this scripture, and it's always stuck with me. And I started reading a little bit more in it, and there's really more to it than just this. But it, it's in Isaiah 43. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. And when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of, of Israel, thy Savior. And that's the first three verses of that. And if you go down to verse 15, I am the Lord your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They, they are extinct. They are quenched as tow. And this is a part that I fail to do because, like I said, we tend to be hard on ourselves and think on the past. I, I did it yesterday. Did I not? I was sitting there. Th I, the song we did a while ago, I said, I don't know that we'll be ready. That's true. And I said, I, and I'm hard on myself. And, and Annette and Paul have encouraged me so much with, with the keyboard because like, when it comes, if I know there's an accomplished piano player in the house, I want to step back because I've taught myself what I do. I don't really know what people say, can you teach me? I said, I don't know what I do. You know, I just hear it. Yvonne and I, when we used to be at another church, I'd tell her, she says, that doesn't sound right. She's come play it. I said, then I couldn't even do what I do now. I says, I don't know how. She says, huh? I said, but I can hear it. <laughs> But anyway, we, you know, I'm, I'm hard on myself. And so the next verse says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And then I, that's all I got underlined, but I read a little bit more. It says, The beast of the field shall honor me. The dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. So I want to encourage you today, don't be like I like to be and dwell on the past, because it's not going to help you. When that salesman came to us and said 1.9%, I about fell out on the floor. We were just going, oh, thank you, Lord. Because I'm telling you, if it had been any more than that, we couldn't do it. We'd be getting some clunker from somewhere else with 150,000 miles on it, paying as much as we are now, and it don't know nothing about it. We've got a brand new vehicle. Brand new. It's here. It's here. So if today, if you're having issues and you're thinking, but just the past, forget it. Let today... Let the Lord do something for you. Listen, there's no reason why every one of us should be jump up and shouting and doing something because something that's been said or done by somebody today should make us shout because it's encouragement to us. And if you're down and out today, put it to the past because you can't change it. It's done. It's, just, it's finished. Let it be. And look ahead to what God can do for you. Praise the Lord. Anybody else got a testimony up in here? John, go here, John. Hallelujah. Y'all enjoying this? Yes, Praise God. I'm glad I am, too. 
want to thank you for praying for me, you know, about what the doctor said. And, <clears throat> but I remember back in 2012, I, I wanted to start a body shop, a restoration customizing business, and uh, ended up getting laid off my job. But before that, I was started to rent this building, and I started setting up all the equipment, and I was still working a full-time job. And the Lord reminded me today, he says, you need to continue to sow wherever you go, no matter what it looks like. Pray for people, encourage people, speak word, speak life to them. And I remember praying for James. <clears throat> he went to check out the shop that day. We went after church one day. And, uh, and the Lord reminded me of that because he started showing me a bit, you know, video of what took place. And <clears throat> he was looking for a job. He was trying to find a job, sending resumes out. And uh, after we looked at the shop and everything, you know, I prayed for him. In the parking lot, it was dirt with rocks. Do you remember, James? <clears throat> and normally when I pray, I keep my eyes open because the Lord says, watch and pray. Okay? <clears throat> so I'd like to see what's going to take place. But the Lord had me close my eyes that day after I started praying for James. And after we finished praying, after I finished praying for him and encouraging him and speaking life and speaking the word into his situation, he says, John, look at the ground. And I, we, I looked at the ground. He said, when we were here, it was just nothing but dirt and rocks. There was quarters all over the floor, all around us. I had almost $10 in quarters that I picked up. And that's a testimony <clears throat> that to continue to pray and believe God because there's change coming to this house, Pastor. And there's some word that the Lord wants me to release May 1st into this house and to the people. But when you receive the change... God's going to multiply it, like the fish and the loaves here. So, Father God, we believe by faith that the food bank ministry is going to continue to multiply like the fish and loaves. And we have childlike faith, Father God, to see the miracles take place, that there will be even abundance left over in Jesus' name. Church, we are getting abundance. Amen. We have got a tremendous amount of abundance in this house, in the food bank and all. Has anybody else got a testimony before Joey and Laura comes up? Joey, I wasn't leaving you out, brother, by no means. I know Laura's been talking, so she got on to me. Dana got on to me and said, Yo, you ain't saying nothing about Joey. This is, uh, come here. Um, <laughs> we have been in our, our home for, well, we've been married 20, almost 21 years, and, and where we're living today, um, I don't know if you, many of you haven't been to our home because we live so far away, and, but a lot have, and... Um, we have had a wonderful, wonderful driveway, and it gets us from point A to point B, point A from the main road to our house, but the, the journey through that driveway is, everybody's been there knows, <laughs> it's flat because we're in Anderson County, but there's places it's like this, okay? I mean, it's ruts and hills and holes and poor Donnie he would get out there with a shovel and he'd take brick and he'd take old slate that we had in the back and different things fill up the holes and then put dirt on top of it and then we'd bounce across everything you know so uh, and this weather we've had has made it worse this year well I just want to praise the Lord this morning that our daughter who lives next door had this wonderful idea that we all go in together and we get refurbished or recycled asphalt we now as of last week we have a driveway and when i say a driveway it's 800 feet of driveway amen i praise god for that because they've never had one down there for 50 years it is a tremendous blessing we got an asphalt driveway now so i know a lot of y'all appreciate that when y'all come to our house amen and i had to go through all those ruts and all those holes god is so good amen he's a good god see anybody else got a testimony up in here Oh, come on, Felix. Different. I'm just going to preach one hour, I promise you. Less than an hour. I'm kidding. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's just wonderful to hear all these testimonies and to see all these uh, faces in the house of the Lord, though. Because we could have been somewhere. We don't need to be uh, hung out somewhere. And I say for my own self, though, I just praise the Lord for what he's done in my life, though. Just put a different change in it. You know, like we say, we fall short of the, you know, the glory of God, though. But I, I've been going through some things, though, with my body and health and all that. 
And the good Lord still, you know, keeping me up. You know, I'm only 55. You know, I should be running around the corner. But I'll tell you right now, if something chased me, it's going to catch me. Because I can't run no more. I just can't run like I used to. But I thank God that he protects me and keep me in my right mind. But uh, like the sister said about her Social Security and all that. And I didn't need no lawyer because uh, I got a lawyer and that's the Lord. But my son is very smart and he uh, signed me up for it and found some, some loop uh, whatever social security or uh, disability guy, and uh, I, I think I applied for it in February, and I just got approved a couple of weeks ago for the SSI, and uh, they took that from me, and they put me on disability and social security, because I worked a long time, so they combined that together. Then I had a, uh, a Medicaid that they give you, I applied for that, and uh, you know, without Medicaid, you really could, nobody really wanna see you, and you don't wanna go to the emergency room, because you just give you a little bit of stuff, then they send you with the, uh, with the prescription. If you don't have no money to pay for that, then it's nothing you get. What's the use? So uh, I got the Medicaid, and they snatched that up because they, they, they switched it over to disability. But I'm, uh, I'm going to get it in a, in a couple of days or weeks. And when I do, I'm going to take real good advantage of it because I need to see, you know, what's going on with myself or certain little things. Like the brother said, you know, band aid here and there. They might have to stick me a few places, but, uh, you know, uh, I have fear of needles and stuff, and I, and, uh, and the Lord blessed me with a set of, you know, dentures that you see up in the top. I'm very, I'm <laughs> very happy about it. <laughs> it's been a long time. I just, didn't, I just ignored it, but uh, I just thank the, uh, the Lord that he's, he's using, you know, other people or my, my family to get what I need to, and uh, I just want to say this, that I've been embarrassed for a long time, and it's something, you know, in the brain. I don't know what you call it. But I, I got like a six, uh, sixth grade reading level in writing and reading, but I still understand what's going on, you know, if I pick up the book or the Bible, something like that. And I just encourage, you know, the young folks and, the, uh, you know, other, the older folks or the young folks, I call it senior citizens, it's not too late to learn if you don't have an a, a, a issue or something in the brain because I can pick up but it just won't it just won't stay but if it's something to do with the Lord Jesus believe me it's gonna stick with me I'm gonna remember what I'm talking about and I'm gonna remember what I'm saying because like the brother said when you uh, my wife said you step out there you need to know who you are in Christ because the devil is waiting for you to approach that person that person gonna want to challenge you you gotta have the right words to say to that person because if you don't he's just gonna just laugh at you just look at you like you're confused and it's, it's a good challenge, you know, to, to talk to people out there in the community, out there in this world that need God. And like me and her, when we used to be out there, you know, we used to, th those demons were surrounding us. But there was a distance because they were waiting for us to say something that didn't belong with God and God's level. But they couldn't, they couldn't attack us, though, because you just can't be fighting back and forth or bickering about God's word, you know, like that back and forth. It's, if it gets to a place that gets too hot, then you pray, then you just walk away. I, you know, that blood is not over you anymore. But I just, I just admire, you know, the testimonies on the day. I admire that the pastor let us, you know, say what we have to say with the Lord, not disrespecting the house of God. And I admire him because he's a true man of God. And I know a true man of God when I hear him. I know when somebody's standing up here is not saying what they're supposed to be saying. I pray for them, but you might not see me anymore. You know, that, that, that's how I am because I don't want to be involved with that different, uh, 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 you know, document or whatever, you know. I want to know what God, you know, me and him. It's just me and him. The rest got to look for themselves. It's not me and my wife. I have to look for my own salvation. I just admire, you know, the, the people of God, too. And, you know, I've been around a lot of nationalities and people. I'm not embarrassed or nothing like that or, or whatever. I just look at you as uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. That's all to me. That's what I see. I don't care what it be, purple, yellow, red. We all gonna have to face the same God. We, 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 we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to answer to, to Jesus. But I want to be in the right place. I want to be with Jesus, the one that, that, that died for me on the cross, spread the blood for me. I don't want to be with Buddha and, and the rest of them out there. They ain't ain't doing nothing but creating, you know, uh, terrorists and all that kind of stuff. Because I was a terrorist just growing up my own self, doing bad things. But I want to be in line when Jesus said, "Here's yours." And I just, go, I just go sit right beside him. And I listen to everything he got to say. But uh, I love you all. And, and keep uh, the Soto family in prayer. Anybody else got a testimony up in here?
Don't let me miss nobody now. All right. Joey, you want to come up here, Laura, brother? Y'all come on up here. Amen. This is awesome what God, and Krista, yeah, you come up here. This is awesome what God has done, y'all. And I've been rejoicing in my spirit because I've been knowing for a while. Amen. But uh, God is a good God, church. He's an awesome God. And when we get blessed in this house, I don't care who it is. We ought to be rejoicing, amen. We ought to reach anybody who gets blessed, and I praise God. Laura, we love y'all. Joey, we love you, brother. We love y'all so much. God, I didn't leave you out. I'm, I'm told about you. I just know Laura's been speaking to you. <laughs> Amen. Um, Kathy just gave it to me. It ties in with what everybody's been saying. And y'all know I walked in, I, I guess y'all could tell, I walked in here in severe pain. I mean, I, I, it was all I could do to get here this morning. Um, and I knew that Satan was trying to keep me from testifying because the Lord has blessed me so much that it's overwhelming. Um, and I knew that he was fighting because Joey's stomach was torn up this morning and I couldn't even get dressed. I was hurting so bad. And anyway, this scripture just, Psalm 41, 11 says, I know that you are pleased with me, for my enemy does not triumph over me. And Kathy pointed that out. And um, I tell you, everything that, um, T, is it TJ? Everything you said about the devil. I'm telling you, y'all, we can't listen to the devil's lies because he will fight us every step of the way, but it's all about God, and he's already won the battle, and Satan just knows he don't have no time. So we got to just keep standing firm. Y'all, I'm overwhelmed by God's goodness. I honestly don't even know where to begin because it blows me away. Over the years, when I started thinking about, okay, how in the world do I even tell this? I can just see how God has led so many things in my life to this point. And I honestly don't even know if I can get it out. Donnie's probably going to burst and just say it for me. But <laughs> um, I just know that God puts certain people in your life along the way that blesses you. Amen. And God puts them in your life and you don't even know how that person's going to affect you one day. Amen. And oh goodness. I want to thank each and every one of y'all. I mean, when I walked in here when they said that about you and Dana, I'm telling y'all. Donnie has told me from day one when I walked in here broken and I was divorced, God is a restoring God and he'll restore more than you can ever imagine. And at that moment, I knew it. I've known the Lord since I was a child, but I didn't feel it at that time. I was hurting so much, and he kept telling me, kept telling me, kept telling me, and as y'all know, I, I, I'm not going to stand here forever. I said I could talk forever telling y'all how good God is. He was my husband. He was my best friend. He was there through all those nights when I was alone and had no idea how I was even going to pay for gas in my car. He's been there through everything. And he became more real to me during the hard times than he ever, you know, we, we, we praise him even when things are good. But I'm telling y'all, he, he becomes so real. And the whole thing is we don't want to go through rough times, but y'all, that's what grows us. That's how we get, we grow in the Lord during those times. We build characters built in us through those times. And I just know that God became so, so real through every moment. And y'all know, I mean, I had rough periods and then God would bless. And, you know, and of course, he was blessing me the whole time. I mean, all the little things that we look over every day that he does for us. Amen. But, you know, then I went through a rough time again before I met Joey and how God brought Joey into my life and, and the blessing of uh, extra group of family here. I've got we got five extra people in our life now. Six extra with Joey, Krista, and I. You know we've done life alone pretty much. And and I'm gonna tell you that little girl right there. I don't know how many of y'all really know her, but 
she may look like a teenager and she may get attitude sometimes. But y'all, I wouldn't have got up. There are so many days I would not have gotten up if it hadn't been for her. She has, she's been the, from day one. She was the reason I had, I had to keep going. And, um, A lot of y'all know that I've struggled. It's been years. I have struggled with a home that has been falling apart. I don't know how many of y'all know, but I'm going to tell you too, I was thankful for my home. Y'all, I, I know there's people out here that are homeless that don't have anything, and I was thankful, and I've been thankful. And I've thanked God, and I've been content with what I've had. But y'all, I've struggled. Krista and I have had so many things happen to us when we've been by ourselves, not knowing what in the world we're going to do. You know, pipes busting and leaks, the roof leaking so bad and water running down the wall when the rain was, and we've struggled with holes in the floors, you know, just, I mean, and I'm not beginning to tell you all. There's just been thing after thing after thing. But I also want to tell you that there's been times where at that moment needs have been met because there have been people that listen to God and that just came in and helped me at that moment and took care of a need. And I've had people that just out of the blue just handed me a check and it was the exact amount of money I needed at that moment. The Lord has been so good to me and I understand about the car because y'all know I was that a few years back, a couple years ago, I was not having a clue how I was going to get a car and the Lord provided it. <laughs> I'm building up to the biggest part that is overwhelming me and blowing my mind. I don't understand how God is so good to me. I'm not worthy. <laughs> and I tell you, every one of y'all deserves just as much. <laughs> and God is not a respecter of persons. He gives to everybody everything we need. Y'all, those of you that were here at my wedding, Fred walked me down the aisle. God put Fred in my life before my dad ever died. I've known him. He walked in and got a haircut in the mall one day. And that man has been in my life for almost 30 years. And he became a dad to me. And he knew my, he had met my dad before my dad died. But I'm telling you, it amazes me how God places someone in your life. Fred has been a dad to me in so many ways, it's not even funny. I mean, financially, he was a businessman. He's retired now, but he has done well, and the Lord's blessed him, and he has blessed me so many times. It, it blows me away. I've always told him I could never repay him, and he says to me, you repay me all the time. It's the, it's the kind of person you are. It's not always about money. And, you know, you give of yourself and your time and your love. And, but anyway, I met him all those years ago. And he had told me a few months back, this is before um, Joey and I were even married. He told me, he said, um, I know a lot of y'all have heard of Habitat for Humanity. Okay, well there's a place called Emmanuel's Hammer that's similar. It's a Christian organization. Um, Fred has donated to them for years. He, he knows the head guys there. And he had told me a while back when I was, you know, still a single mom, he said, you know, you might qualify for some help with your home. And um, I said, uh, man, that would be wonderful. Well, anyway, and time went by and I didn't hear anything. And right after Joey and I got married, he brought me an application. He said, you fill it out. You put in everything you're dealing with. Take pictures, all the stuff you're dealing with. And he said... I'll take it personally to the head guys. And I mean, I was blown away that he would even consider doing it, much less that they would even consider helping me. But I filled it out and <laughs> he, um, at the time, it was when Columbia and Charleston had flooded and um, he had taken it and they said it'd be six months before we can even look at your application because they were helping build homes and help people with all the flooding. 
And so I was like, okay, Lord, you know, whatever. I'm just thankful for any help. Well, <laughs> literally almost six months to the day, they contacted me and called me and said, I want, we want to come talk to you. We want to see you at your home and talk to you about your application. <laughs> Y'all, they came out. They were amazing. They were the most the Christian men I've ever, they prayed with me. They were so amazing. It blew me away. And I just got word. <laughs> They're going to build us a brand new home. <laughs> Y'all. I just have, I can't even, I don't even have the words to express how I feel. It's blowing my mind. I am so overwhelmed. I've cried. I've shouted. I've screamed. I've <laughs> just, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And right now, I've got to do what I did out in the outside. I know we're taking up time. But I got out in the middle of my yard the other night in the dark. And this is what I sang, and I've got to do it. <laughs> oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the roar. displayed then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my I love y'all and I thank y'all for loving me and people here have blessed me every from the moment I got here and I just thank y'all so much and I'm thankful for y'all Jacob and Sarah where'd Sarah go she disappeared but anyway I'm just thankful for everybody here and I love y'all very much thank you Dana and Donnie love you, love. <laughs> well as I don't know how many people's known that we've been Praying well together, and some some other people's been praying that um, my job, and we've been needing insurance and stuff, <clears throat> and we've been blessed with a job that I got at the end of Come on, praise God, church, my Lord. This is what church is all about. It's not always coming over here. Come on, y'all. It's about people's lives being changed. Y'all, we want to see lives changed. Amen. This is what the church is all about. My Lord, I promise y'all, y'all can be seated for just a minute. We're going to hold you long. I promise I'm not even preaching. There's just a, one, two verses I want to give you. Then we're going to do something special for everybody in here. Pat, if you don't mind, hun, if you'd go ahead and uh, get some help. Somebody help Pat, please. And to get something loaded up uh, to bring in here while I share just a scripture, a few words. Amen. If you got your Bible, if you want to, you can open up to Galatians chapter 6. God put this in my spirit and I want to share this. Because some people don't understand why we do what we do. You know, I'm a pastor who don't, I don't, I love to preach. 
I love God's Word. God's Word is so powerful. And I feel such an anointing, Spirit of God, joy. I love God's Word. It's powerful. It's truth. Everybody needs His Word. It's not just for the pastor. It's for all of us. Amen. And sometimes people don't understand the things we do. But when we started this ministry, when God called us to start this ministry, He said, meet the needs of the people. A pastor is to feed the sheep. That's what a pastor is to do. All the leadership is to do that. And to meet the needs of the people is not just getting up here preaching. To me, that's the icing on the cake. I love to preach. It's fun. I mean, I love preaching God's Word. But it's more than just meeting the spiritual needs. God says meet the needs of the people. That goes for the physical needs too. This ministry, this church, we minister to a lot of people who are outside this church. Some of them we may not see three or four times. Others we'll see a lot. And we minister to them spiritually and we minister to their physical needs. We actually give food. But God began, he showed me two scriptures and I want to give you these scriptures. They're found in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, you can mark this in your Bible. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and verse 10. Verse 9 says this, let us not be weary in well-doing. How many here can honestly say sometimes you get weary in well-doing? Come on, we do, don't we? We get weary sometimes helping people because if it weren't for the people here, y'all, the people that we have to do this food bank we do, it'd be very, very, very hard. But we have some awesome people who, de who dedicate their time and their efforts to do this food bank. But the Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing. He says, for in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. You know, today, I didn't realize what God had put in my spirit. We're going to bless every family in here today with desserts, with eggs, bread, meats coming in here in a minute. Y'all, come on. Everybody's going to be blessed with some meat today. Amen. Drinks. Yeah, we got drinks. And if you don't like Coke Zero, give them to somebody who does. We're still going to give you some. Amen. <laughs> we're going to bless every family in here. We want you to take what we're giving because we're blessing. And the reason we're doing that, now listen, he says, I want to read this one more time. Don't be worrying well doing for in due season we're going to reap if we faint not. I didn't realize when God put that in my spirit what to do today to bless the families of the church that God was actually going to bless the ministry today. Y'all, after God put that in my spirit, we come in here to do that, somebody come up to this morning, and I'd already said it, gave us 30 ounces, not pieces, 30 ounces of silver. Amen. Silver's running about $16 to $17 an ounce. That's over $450 right here in silver that was given today, y'all. To this ministry. We want to give God some type of praise. Amen, Judy. Thank you. And then on top of that, I mean, because we're just blessing the people. We want to bless you. But on top of that, somebody gave the food bank this morning $500 to the food bank. Isn't that awesome? And we was needing some money in the food banks. That's a blessing, praise God. But this is tremendous. This is going to be used for our, for our mortgage. Uh, amen. We're going to put this up. And, and in fact, Stan's got something God's putting this out later on. We'll be talking about that. That's a good start on our mortgage. One more verse. Let me give it to you. And then it says, verse 10. This is really right, what really got in my spirit. You know, we're to do good to all people when we have that opportunity. But the Bible says, as we have therefore opportunity... As we have opportunity, guess what? We have an opportunity today, this morning. Let us do good unto all men. But look at the next word, y'all. Especially. Look at your never say especially. especially. Especially unto them who are what? Of the household of faith. Especially we should we be blessing you in the house. Because let me tell you, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. Amen. Come on, I'm telling you right now, if it were not for you being in here right now, we wouldn't be here, wouldn't have a church, we couldn't do anything. So today, we want our appreciation for you. This is a little something. I wish we could do more. I'd be glad we'd come in here and pay everybody's mortgage off. Won't that be fun? Come on, y'all. Those that are faithful in the house. 
Wouldn't that be wonderful? Who says we can't do that? We can't limit God. God can do anything. But today we want to bless everybody, especially the household of faith, those that have been faithful. So I want some of the leaders to come on up here, if you would. Grab you a table, two to a table. Some of you men might want to get on the drinks, so these will be sort of heavy. And, what, and uh, I don't know, Kathy, if you want to come or you just want to, it's up to you, hon. If you feel like you can. Those who can, we got meat, we're giving bags of meat. Now, I don't know what kind of, we got hamburger, we got chicken, we got different things. If you don't, Here's my thing. If you don't get what you like, give it to somebody else. And let's be thankful. Amen. Amen. Be thankful for what we get. I wish we could give more. But we're going to go by. What we're going to do is give. We got eight packs. These are coming to eight packs. We're going to give eight packs to. And uh, I guess the guys, men might want to carry these drinks. But everybody, we're just giving drinks. Y'all go ahead and get some eggs. Let's try to make sure everybody gets a, a, a carton of eggs and some meat, bread. Praise God. <laughs> Let them young boys carry about that. I'm carrying two at a time. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Come on. <laughs> You're supposed to be up here. <laughs> praise the Lord. Who else got? I got drinks. Y'all got drinks. Yes, sir. Bless you, my brother. Thank you. Yes, right. Amen. I think I brought too many out here. No, we ain't using back for all that, huh? Did you get drinks yet? Has Ken and Amanda? Okay, huh? Get some bags. We got some in the back. I forgot y'all might get a lot of stuff. We got some in the back. Y'all, let me tell you this too. Oh yeah, all the time. And y'all, this is why we're going to dismiss this service today. When you get everything you want, that's fine. We'll be dismissed. But we just wanted to bless you. Amen. And love each and every one of you and appreciate you. Praise God.